South Asian digital uh, travel conversation. Uh, today, topic for today is uh, the wellness tourism in the region. And uh, we have with us uh, on today's panel five uh, you know, stars and of the best spas and uh, wellness centers in the region. So uh, I would uh, start by welcoming all of you for accepting our invitation and to be on this platform to share your thoughts and views on the current situation uh, that the industry across the region is facing and uh, per se individual industries and segments of wellness tourism that you represent. So uh, big welcome to all of you. Uh, I would uh, move on to just uh, introduce the panel for today. First of all, we have uh, Mr. Ushan Idrisinghe. He's a senior marketing manager, Siddalpa Ayurveda Health Resort, having a work experience at Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau for about 17 years. He has represented Sri Lanka at international travel forums and conventions, started his career at the Siddalpa Ayurveda in 2012. He has played a leading role in organizing Siddalpa Ayurveda International Symposium, the first of its kind Ayurveda Symposium held in Sri Lanka with the participation of in international speakers and media in the year 2019. He has participated in many key international wellness, medical and health travel forums. He is a nature lover and uh, carrying out a healthy cooking uh, and he carries out healthy cooking sessions in countries such as Japan, uh, Germany, Austria, China, Lithuania, and in Poland. Next, we have uh, Shreya Krishnan. She is the marketing advisor for Ibni Kurk. At a professional level, uh, Shreya is the senior vice president marketing and communications at the Anvidi Insurance Broker CSB specialist and a corporate grooming consultant. She is on the advisory board of four organizations and four NGOs. Uh, that's just one facet of who she is. This uh, former corporate diva and Miss Universe 2017 has also dabbed in activism, dance, theater, poetry, blogging, modeling, acting, and the list goes on. Uh, she considers herself a, an earth warrior and is an event at anchor and trainer also. She recently has co-authored a book titled Words Matter, the languages that girls need to speak. The book is a compilation of 40 words that help the reader to choose their vocabulary in a way that allows them to redefine how human beings are treated. Next, we have Mr. Abdullah Sharif, head of spa operation Aramu Spa, the Maldives, working as the current head of spa operations of Villa Hotels and Resorts, one of the biggest companies in Maldives tourism industry. He has started his career at Villa Shipping and Tours in 2000. Together uh, with the knowledge acquired and the hands-on and valuable experience helped him to grow both personally and boost his career, facilitating to slowly move up the ladder, leading to the opportunity to join the wellness and spa operations of the Villa Group as an assistant manager of operations. After spending nearly a decade working in spa operations, he has learned how important of a sector it is for this industry and is what truly drives this portion of the industry. Today, he, as the head of spa operations, his ultimate goal is to connect with his clients at a deeper level and provide the best services available in the region. Uh, well, uh, next we have uh, Marisol uh, Sernais, uh, director of spa, Sun Siam, the Maldives a well-rounded spa and wellness director with 14 years of experience in the spa industry with five pre-openings spa, uh, spas under her belt. She is highly trained and specialized in different modalities and operation, managing wellness, fitness, and outdoor recreational activities. Uh, she, she is a certified water shiatsu practitioner and a yoga instructor as well. Experience in four-star and five-star resorts with LHW, OA, and LRA background. Last but not least, on the panel, we have uh, Dr. Tom Shannon, consultant, surgeon, and founder of ISO Medispa Heritage Araha, consultant surgeon in Perth, 
Australia with over 20 years of experience as a cancer surgeon. Over a decade ago, he began looking at a more holistic view to cancer care, developing pre and post operative programs to improve health and prevent illness. Using bespoke, uh, bespoke uh, software, uh, they were able to predict future disease risk and use this to motivate people to make the changes they need. They needed. The concept of I saw Medivh Spa at Haritan Taraha is to use time away from home and work commitments to do something for the person. So that is our panel for today evening. Uh, and I would like to welcome the audience also for tuning in as usual and uh, you know following us over this 12 episodes. Uh, so my first question for the evening is to Sharif. Sharif, as a pioneer of wellness and commitment to the health and well-being of your guests, what can you say about the way the industry has grown from being quite a niche to being a trillion dollar global market today? What has driven this growth? Uh, Sharif, you're on mute. I can hear me now? Yes, loud and clear. Yeah. Thank you. The thing is, more and more people are adapting healthier lifestyle for themselves. And seeing this option of wellness getaway being offered hand in hand, when you look for holidays destination, this appeal to them, seeing this appeal, the tourism sector worldwide has picked upon on this trend and started offering wellness option to capture higher spending wellness travelers. It has become a trend through the world. This can be seen in the revenue generated from the wellness tourism economy. It has jumped an annual growth rate twice as higher as general tourism. This rapid growth of wellness tourism around the world has been stimulated by several factors such as a rising global medical class, increasing consumer desire to adopt a wellness lifestyle and growing interest in experiential travel. Right. Uh, thank you, Sharif. Uh, uh, Ushan, uh, this question is for you. Uh, what are some of the more individual level factors that lead to wellness climbing to the top of people's priority list? In the recent years, how is the coronavirus pandemic factoring into this growth? Uh, Ushan, you are on mute. Yeah, thank you. I'm okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, actually, originally it was popular. The, it was becoming popular when I say alternative medicine. Apart from when you take wellness for the South Asian region, it's important Ayurveda, I believe. So it was becoming popular already by the time of Corona. That means before the Corona. So uh, there were reasons, actually. A uh, lot of people in their day-to-day -day life, they're really, really restless. And a lot of body abnormalities, that they're working with body abnormalities, but they didn't have time to do. They didn't, they didn't have time to care or do any kind of treatment. So, uh, and then uh, Ayurveda, it serves like, okay, when somebody says, I'm going on a tour, it means like you are spending on a luxurious tour. But when it becomes to health, people are not worried about spending on health. So they are not th thinking twice uh, spending on medicine or your health. So health tourism was already on the priority list out of their general travel. So that was the scenario prior to the uh, corona issue. But after the corona, I think you are talking again about the uh, post-corona scenario, right? Yeah. Right. So at this stage, uh, so uh, when, you say, when you say wellness, it's a wider scope, like you get each and everything, even drinking water could be wellness, right? It gives you strength. However, I read that it's like you, you heal your body, not only body, you heal your mind, and not only mind, but you heal your soul as well. So it's like uh, more, as everybody knows here, like uh, it's way of life. 
So uh, already we had the preventive care in Ayurveda before Corona comes. So when Corona came in, it's a matter of just using those elements. So it's not something new people had. So they started using with the Corona on preventive care. So always Ayurveda had their, their it was on their priorities. Right. So that's thank my, uh, yeah, answer. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that, Bhushan. Uh, uh, the next question is for you, Shreya. Uh, what are the yeah. biggest trending topics in the wellness world uh, this year? And do you have any predictions uh, for the future uh, going forward? Look at it. I think wellness is the most overused and abused word in the, in the world right now. Uh, because you see trends, uh, trends emerging every few weeks. Uh, but I think in the last two or three years, I think consistently what you see is one, an increased awareness of preventive health, uh, which is basically to talk about how engaging your mind, body, soul, spirit in preventing action in taking care of your health has risen. And what a lot of people have also realized that this is directly linked to time off from regular schedules and traffic. Uh, so if you look at it from a hybrid approach to fitness, uh, to intuitive eating and eating right, you are what you eat is what they say. So eating right has become a trend. Um, emotional wellness and mental health in the last especially two years has picked up a lot of interest and conversations around this are happening all over the world. So I think that's also something that has come into focus right now. And very strongly, especially with the suicides going on and in COVID times, I think this conversation is very relevant and it's completely connected to your exercise regime. It's connected to what you eat. It's connected to what you consume. You know, fake news and fear and media and all of this going on is also hitting your immunity, right? So I think people are realizing the value of investing in emotional health and mental wellness. And then there's, of course, the conversations around fitness from yoga to dance to, uh, you know, all kinds of new uh, fitness-related applications, fitness-related Conversations coming to the fore, the focus on fitness has never been higher, as you see today in 2020. Then, of course, like uh, uh, Ushan just said, Ayurveda never goes out of vogue. I think it's one of those things that has proven methodologies and techniques in ensuring preventive health and consistently showcasing the fact that uh, investing in Ayurveda for yourself will actually help you uh, ride over and tide over a lot of ailments that could perhaps come to you because it directly works with your body and its immunity. Then there's, of course, this desire for glowing skin, healthy hair. So there's a whole beauty aspect of trends around wellness that's coming to the fore again. If you see, they're all very, very strongly connected. Uh, there is rest and recharge because I think now the rest is not really what, what people have realized is in COVID times, rest is not rest at home because work from home is the new norm now. Rest is mental rest and mental peace. And so that has also gained a lot of popularity and interest and looking at recharging the brain, the mind, the body and the soul. And the one word that's sort of perhaps come to the fore a lot of times, mindfulness, being in the now. Uh, so you're not attaching yourself too much into the future or, you know, detaching yourself too much from what is to happen in the past. I think there's a lot of connectedness in all of these issues that I spoke about. And I think the trend is to actually look at them holistically and to look at wellness, not as parts and pieces of many puzzles, but as the complete puzzle of the mind, the body, the spirit, and the soul, and actually engage in activities uh, that will actually give you respite on all of these fronts. So I think that is the trend that's going to go forward in terms of holistic preventive health and holistic preventive health leading to wellness on an everyday basis from everything you consume. So sustainably well put plans that actually help invest in a better you. All right, thank you. That is quite uh, interesting. Uh, um, Marisol, uh, this question is for you. Uh, how is this particular moment in history uh, changing hospitality as we know it? And uh, do you, uh, have you noticed any specific trends uh, in the guest request or, uh, you know, uh, from the industry as such that that is like more to do with the situation that we are in today as compared to where we were before? So most of the traveler, travelers now are hesitant to travel uh, some of the countries. And uh, the impact now is we are changing after this, uh, for the post-COVID, we are changing the SOPs for both ways to protect our guests and our team as well. 
And um, some spa goers are going back to the old ways and natural ways, saying like Shriya was saying, it's it's going back to like water healing, music dance, and self healing is more on the trend right now. Or using treatments that they can be found uh, in their kitchen, and example like exercising as well at home. So these are the things that the spa goers and um, the wellness uh, in the future will be. Have it. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, Dr. Tom, uh, just to bring you in, uh, wellness as an industry, uh, wellness as an industry uh, would be a worrying uh, at a worrying phase right now, as it's a touch-based service. Right, there's a lot of touch involved. How do you see the new normal uh, for the industry under these uh, situations? Thanks for the question. Look, I think we're all facing a challenge at the moment that we've never faced before. And even understanding exactly what COVID means, uh, we're at the start and we're working out where we're going and, and what's happening almost on a weekly basis. I think what we know about COVID and what's been proven around the world is that it's very infectious, but it's not very dangerous. The people who are having problems with COVID are generally a bit sick already. And, and I think you alluded to that and some of the other speakers have spoken about it. And I think it's probably one of the things that has sparked an interest in wellness at the moment for us all provides that opportunity is there are a lot of people out there who are probably more at risk than they want to be because they're overweight or their lifestyles aren't as good as they could be. Um, so that's one opportunity for us, but I don't think we've worked out yet how we can reignite travel and how we can get people sort of safely into resorts. And that's our next challenge. So I think we, depending on what you read, uh, a vaccine is a while away. I think it's going to be a challenge for us to bring people in uh, through an airport and make sure they don't contact anybody who's got COVID. Um, there's a lag, a latency between contracting it and testing positive. So it's going to be hard to bring people into a resort. But look, all our staff are going to be tested. Um, I think we can do what we can do with social distancing and wearing masks and things like that. But that's not really our business. We do need to sort of touch people, massage, have close conversations with them. So uh, it's, it's really fingers crossed at the moment that we can find uh, an effective way to be able to bring people to the resorts in a safe way. And I think for us being based in Maldives, we're very lucky that we have islands and uh, we can be isolated and our risk of there being any infections on the island is very low. So of the island nations, you know, Philippines uh, is another one might actually do well. We might be very safe places for people to come. Um, but it's still, watch this space. Let's see what happens when we start getting visitors again. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sharif, uh, we are all about sustainability here at the Maldives. And in the recent years, we have watched environmental issues going from being a sideline topic to a dominating uh, headline uh, or, or across various platforms. How has the rise of sustainability shaped wellness brands, marketing, and the products in the islands? Uh, Sharif, you're on mute. Is it okay now? Yeah. Yes, well, uh, sustainability. It has been a, a backhanded issue for long as the tourism industry has been operating in the Maldives. I think that Maldives has been slowly and steadily going in the right direction as far as sustainability goes. As more and more resorts have started to adopt a more sustainable environmental friendly options, such as using less plastic or banning single use plastic, looking at options of locally sourcing for necessities of the industry taking initiative to grow own food, recycling, uh, so on and so forth. Marketing such green concepts and sustainable practice also appeals to the consumer. And this in turn has shown a favorable growth for the industry. 
Apart from this, business sustainability depends on customer care etiquette and moving in tune with the customer needs. If we keep shaping and molding our business strategies according to the search specifics and keeps up with the trends, there will always be an appeal out there for our targeted consumers. In our case, that is higher paying wellness tourists. That's it. Uh, I have a problem. Yes, I can't. Sorry? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it, yeah. It, okay. it, that's it. Yeah. Okay, uh, basically this question is for Shreya. Uh, so it's to do with uh, social distancing and the social distancing has a limited capacity uh, and limited capacity have characterized the latest, uh, you know, few months. Uh, in the world of luxury, scarcity and exclusivity have always been the two key features of the experience. How would, uh, would you agree that looking for places with less and less people would be, become a more stable trend uh, going forward? Yes, absolutely. You know, in the world of luxury, less is more, uh, especially if you're talking about ethical luxury, sustainable luxury, less is obviously more. And I think the idea will be to look at experiences that are curated and crafted, like age-old luxury is now going to become a norm. You don't want people touching, you want less contact, you want more technology uh, innovation. Uh, you know, some of the things that we've done is we've gone completely technology on uh, room orientations, on our, you know, communication when people enter. So when you see fewer people and when you have less of fear of contact, there is more uh, sort of a, a trust in the fact that I can trust the space, I can go into this space. And, you know, practices that you employ will also really craft and chart the new normal uh, in terms of the industry for as long as it takes to build a vaccine. Uh, so I think the answer, the long answer to that is this, but the short answer is absolutely yes. Uh, I think it is important to look and invest and it's already ongoing if you look at a lot of sustainable luxury eco-based uh, practices which even Abdullah was speaking about. If you look at it, they're all very, very niche and they all uh, sort of attract a target segment, segment that is conscious, that wants to make the effort to actually make that change. And it's all again linked, it's all connected. So how you are uh, behaving in terms of your responsibility as a tourist will now be all the more important as a conscious traveler for you to ensure that not only do you keep yourself safe, but you also keep everybody around you safe. So it's just, it's not the onus of the resorts or the you know travel spaces alone, but it's also the onus of the traveler. So it's important to remember that yes, it's going to become more crucial to have experiences that are built in terms of this concept and ideology of fewer, lesser, maintain social distancing. At the same time, take away from the experience uh, because ultimately that's what people travel for. And if you can strike that right balance, which I think is the challenge in current times, I think we should be okay, at least temporarily till things go back to the old normal. The uh, right balance between technology and the experience, right? Yeah. So Ushan, uh, when crisis come, they may also bring opportunities and push people to be more creative. What changes have you bought to ensure the business continuity uh, across different markets uh, in perspective of your brand? Yes, uh, Corona, I mean, COVID-19 made a very big impact on the lifestyle of global people, I mean, everybody. So it changed drastically our lifestyle, even the food patterns and everything. So uh, luckily we had Ayurveda. So when I say uh, positive side, actually Ayurveda became very positively on the impact. As an impact, actually people started uh, using, for example, special porridges, health porridges to get energized or to get as preventive care and certain herbal leaves they put into the uh, hot water and steamed it so they could get rid of getting affected i mean so they could be away always with the i mean the virus cases so the preventive care is very important uh, as you all know once you get affected you are you know it's very difficult 
uh, we in the society and we have to be isolated and uh, all this problem starts. Uh, and then uh, when I say uh, that's the general food pattern, but apart from that, we had all herbal concoctions they could take as, uh, they took in fact uh, as medicine. So they, the, in the allopathic medicine, we didn't have any kind of, I mean, medicine that you can take against the COVID-19. So we, why is, uh, sorry, in Ayurveda, we had the, uh, uh, the medicines exit. And then, again, the Ayurveda, the doctors played a bigger role, an important role in our quarantine centers. With the emergence of this COVID-19, the government declared the quarantine centers throughout the island. So which was a rare case, I think. It was the first experience for us as well as Sri Lankans. So uh, at these quarantine centers, we started in March, as early as March, I can remember, treating Ayurveda way to get prevented from affecting. So that was a major start. So that's why still Sri Lanka maintained, I mean, uh, the death, uh, we have limited to 11 still. Uh, however, now uh, Sri Lanka in process of bringing back our expatriates, which is uncontrollable, you know, people are coming from all over the world. Of course, we are bringing on our special flights, so they are being transferred to the quarantine centers, if not affected. If they are affected at the airport itself, they'll be, from the airport, they'll be transferred to the hospital, specialized hospital. So with this scenario, the, uh, under the COVID-19, as I explained, we could limit the damages with the help of Ayurveda. Now you said being creative actually. Being creative means it's a matter of just getting forward our facts of Ayurveda. For example, now uh, if I take an example from my resort, I said Dalipa Ayurveda Health Resort, we have introduced herbal disinfecting process at the entrance. When they check in, before they check in, they can steam the herbal uh, herbal steam with a lot of herbs in it and they can get disinfected. So as I said, the changes, these kind of uh, introductions, new changes we have done. Otherwise, we are already in with our Ayurveda treatments that gives uh, adverse effect on affecting further or spreading. And again, it's like, uh, for example, just being in the nature will be very helpful. Ayurveda is nature friendly or eco friendly, and just being with the nature friendly way or spending the life in the nature way is very much enough to get more and more people. Now, people know every, uh, globally, of course, this is uh, very helpful in getting improved their immunity and energy. So that's the, what they needed. Now, people are getting ready for the second wave as well. So if you are getting ready for the second wave, you have to be uh, strong enough to bear with it, or your, your immunity should be at your best level. Otherwise, you will be collapsed again. So that's the way we, we try to highlight and uh, to tell people those who don't know, but luckily people are aware now. So those are the changes that we are going to heighten and highlight. Thank you. Surajan, yeah, sorry. Uh, Marisol, uh, this is for you. Uh, see, we know that all countries around the world don't have uh, like a warm and tropical climate like in the Maldives, okay, nearly all the year round. Uh, is there any advice you would suggest uh, to visitors from northern and eastern uh, or colder parts of the globe uh, in taking care of themselves, uh, you know, in this situation? Or is there some uh, methodology that you know they can adapt from us uh, well, in this region to take care of themselves under this uh, given circumstances okay so for the cold countries like cold winter weather it can also be harsh on your skin so cold air and low humidity outdoors can dry out the skin and similarly when we do have our indoor uh, moisture as well it, so here are the few tips that they can do in their house and common for, for all the cold countries. Uh, they can start with letting their skin breathe by doing exercise, sweating, warming up to open the and clear the pores of the, of the skin and increase the circulation to deliver the nutrients. Next one is they can also do um, like eat fats, healthy fats, 
you wanted to our skin to be healthy it has to come from the inside eating um keeping their skin supple and moisturized from the inside drink a lot of water drinking tea so covering the exposed uh, skin areas by using gloves of course exposed skin can be possible when it's very cold protecting it from elements that are soft valuable moisture from your skin use um, hydrating mask that you maybe also consider making your homemade mask like avocado yogurt milk coconut combination with olive oil using mild soap as well moisturize uh, use your skin using natural oil especially using coconut oil olive oil and argan or jojoba oil uh, uh, dr tom uh, being a wellness professional and a curator of a brand how vital is uh, you know the role of digital communication and uh, use of digital technology under the given circumstances i think we'll all look back at covid as being this line in the sand where digital technology really took off i mean you only have to look at what's happened in the the share market to see that companies like apple and google and so on are, are now the biggest in the world and i think for us it's been the cornerstone of what we've been doing from the start our vision uh, is to bring the evidence based medicine into the spa and into the resort so um we haven't planned for this pandemic but what we planned for was to be looking after people who would be more interested in their health and what you've got to realize is that everybody's going to live quite a long time now because of technology because of good medicine in most countries but a lot of us aren't living well over that time a lot of us are sick for 20 years or so so what we've done is we've looked at the evidence to say well what's hurting people what's killing people what can we do about it and we use technology to predict what's going to happen to each individual which is really quite unique and we're we're able to give somebody a very clear idea of what they need to do to reduce their risk of developing disease which is primary prevention and we can also tell them what tests they need to do to detect disease early which is the secondary prevention um it's been mentioned already tonight but a lot of people look at quality of life as well as uh, looking good and feeling good and and i think that's where the we've melded in the technology of the the aesthetics industry and there's so much that's changed there in the last 5 years or so so that we can now offer things in a resort that we were previously you had to go to a hospital to achieve these results so again on the resort we have a lot of equipment technology we have lasers and led lights and uh body sculpting and all these different things that are very much technology based which people will consider i think looking good when you look good you feel good when you feel good we end up with this virtuous circle where people try harder they 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 eat better they exercise more because they want to stay looking good they want to stay feeling good they want to live longer and that's all we're trying to achieve and i think in the in the in the short time we've got them for we can give them a a, a little nudge in the right direction and give them the, the data and the information but with the uh information we can give them now with the technology uh it, you won't see us looking back right thank you uh shreya uh the luxury hospitality and wellness uh segment also imposes the highest uh, standards of service so uh guests nowadays expect consistency uh whether on their return to the property or experiencing a new one so is there a particular recipe that uh, you know you have uh, that can be shared uh if you look at it the recipe is actually uh, not a stand alone recipe which you can plug and play anywhere it is exactly like your grandma's recipe it's curated to who you are and what your personality is as a space where you're allowing people to come in and especially in the wellness space if you look at it and wellness luxury space um you are playing this role of the doctor who has a say you know in what people do but at the same time they are coming to you not as a consultative doctor but as somebody where they want to relax and chill and still have a good time right 
So it's it's trying to make that fine balance of ensuring that they do what's best for them, at the same time giving them an experience that they truly cherish and enjoy. And and you know I think the key word is experience because unless it's an immersive experience that takes them through this process as a very very a friendly neighborhood process versus a very high-handed process it makes a vast difference in the approach uh, and i think the recipe to service is always to put not what the customer wants but what the customer needs at the heart of wellness you know they can want a whole lot of things but what we provide and what they need has to be matched in such a way that the best outcome for them whether it's 3 days 12 days 21 days whatever it is as long as they are with you you take them on that journey of experience and that is the recipe and that is completely left to the people who are handling them uh, to the space that you have built to your ethos your pathos your logos and who you are as a personality or a brand uh, that actually you bring to them on a platter so yes to technology yes to sustainability yes to green practices at the same time matching this at the same part of what the consumer wants and taking them with you on that journey towards their own wellness and ensuring that you leave a mark and you make them feel like they want more because they don't have to come back to you but they can go back there and say this was a beautiful experience and you've done your job uh, because i think it's a little more than just being a space to have a great time uh, ushan uh interest in holistic wellness uh, and natural living now spans an endless range of treatments including organic cosmetics healthy eating veganism body and mind exercise yoga and spiritual cleansing and re-energizing uh, uh, etc uh, there is also much information out there what do you believe is one of the most important actions as an individual can do on a regular basis you know such as spa treatment to improve their sense of well-being yeah when you talk about well being or your health even in any kind of crisis the most important thing is have your water quantity for the day at least 2.5 liters you have your clean water it will keep you healthy it will keep you energized of course immunity also will work then so that's the first thing and then the healthy meal because healthy meal change you daily that's your body pattern that's how human being is being created then you can control your body just having the healthy food that could be the major those are the two main component then i strongly request if anybody can focus their energy boosting or immunity boosting ayurveda treatment that be the next point first two you can do at home basically anybody can do being anywhere in the world so the second one you have to go to a proper ayurveda provider or a with a doctor oh, definitely with a doctor and have your uh, boosting of energy and immunity treatment maybe along with detoxification or of course stress release will be there automatically in ayurveda there are enormous enormous number of treatments in ayurveda to have this immunity improvement so uh, it should not be very difficult so there are enough places as well being south asians of course sata south asia we are lucky to be in this region we all so we have this we have the nature so i request everybody to get stronger in this way uh, even with the body exercises body exercises also you can do being at home and have your focused ayurveda treatment as well at a proper ayurveda service provider that's my advice thank you uh, um sharif uh, what advice uh, would you like to give to leaders keen to genuinely create uh, inclusive cultures when it comes to mental health and minority uh, awareness well suraj i may not be the best person to give advice on this yeah, i take it back subject. i take it back uh, what are your thoughts <laughs> since, on this subject since i'm not a medical expert <laughs> but as far as uh, this subject is concerned i think more and more doors are opening for the mental health awareness as the general public is getting educated on this subject even the government is taking the matter more serious more seriously than ever before 
there is definitely cultural restriction in this regard as far as our island nation is concerned but the future looks is promising and more and more positive changes on monitor, on mental health is being addressed and since so many efforts are being made now to create more awareness the subject itself and on how to navigate through the mental health issue and how it is being practiced in terms of minority i think the industry is also paying more attention to be inclu inclusive and be more accepting and open to reach out. That's it. Thank you. Marisol, this is for you. Uh, are there any uh, new and exciting uh, research developments in the spa therapies, uh, skin care, or massage treatments that you believe could really take off in the, uh, you know, coming years uh, post COVID? So as I mentioned earlier, we are going back to traditions, like um, water treatments will be there, taking hot and cold spring, lakes, the value of pure wa flowing water and increase, become recognized in true wellness resources, an emphasis of water and wellness resource opportunities to promote the qualities of water treatments that we have in different spas. Ayurvedas will be there as well as it's become a most strong lymphatic drainage treatment. Um, lymphatic system is responsible for helping pathogens access fluid bacteria throughout our body so lymphatic massage will be um, one of the famous treatment that we will be having. Of course yoga, meditation, singing ball, listening to relaxing music, and there is one sabbatical wellness. Sabbatical wellness is a wellness. Um, it's like a when you're going for a vacation for a, it's a tw 21 days treatments or a wellness vacation, but this time you can go with your um, gadgets that you can still work. Um, the, the resort or the sabbatical wellness uh, Resort will prepare your um, program from your room to make it uh, more conducive when you're working, more relaxing, then prepare the, your area as well. Daily activities will be there, recreationals and uh, me meditation, yoga. They will prepare everything within 21 days. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Tom, uh, I would like to have your perspective on the same question. Like, uh, would you want me to repeat the question or? Uh, yeah, can you again, please? Yeah, yeah. basically, uh, I'm looking for uh, to hearing about new, exciting new, new, yeah, new treatments in terms of, uh, you know, spa therapies or wellness treatments, this thing that we could see uh, a possibility going forward in the coming uh, days post COVID and, you know, what are the opportunities that might come up? Well, look, I would agree with Marisol that I hope that people will take their health a bit more seriously and maybe invest a bit more time. And I'd hope the, the wellness vacation, the, the two, three week stay where we can actually achieve significant change will become a lot more common. I think one of the frustrations we all have is that we can only achieve so much when people are with us for five or seven days. And sometimes what they need to achieve is a lot more. Uh, what we've developed is we've developed certainly on the aesthetic side, we can make a, a big difference to people in, in five to seven days um, using technology. And so there's, there's exciting out of hospital technology that can, you know, change the, you know, we can dissolve fat, we can change the shape of, of faces, we can improve skin quality um, and people can go home without any scars or any visible signs that, that they've had a treatment. But I think the, the more exciting things would be for people to come and spend a bit of time with us and lose 10 kilos and go home fitter and not have diabetes anymore and not have high blood pressure. And, and hopefully that might be a side effect of COVID that if you take a vacation, you might, you might actually have to stay two or three weeks. 
um, to make sure that you don't have the virus before you go home. So who knows? I think it's a very exciting time and uh, going to be very challenging. Yeah, Ushan, uh, would you like to, uh, you know, take this question from the perspective of Ayurveda? You're on mute. Uh, uh. Okay, it's about changes and new treatments you're talking about, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, looking more at, you know, uh, exciting new treatments, uh, like say from the Ayurvedic uh, school of uh, medicine or the wellness side. Yes, so what could actually, be some interesting uh, stuff? Sorry. Yeah, it's not new particularly because Ayurveda, we had already, it's a matter of getting forward and using it. As again, I can say again, uh, the food comes into play first. You have to do the healthy, get the healthy food for, a, for the particular situation. And then when you say I do the treatment, it could be uh, objective wise, you can say detoxifying uh, treatments, stress releasing, or uh, doing weight loss, uh, up to rejuvenation, as you all know. So everybody would like to get rejuvenated. Of course, you get younger. So uh, when you go into detail in the treatments, of course, I can't tell everybody, please do this and that because the body, their body uh, build is different from one person to other person. You first have a proper consultation with the doctor and get the suitable treatment for a certain number of hours for the day and then continue it along with the yoga and suitable ex body exercises because that keeps you healing your body, mind and soul simultaneously because it should be controlled internally and externally both. That's what Ayurveda does. Because as you, you all know, Ayurveda is a medical system. It's not just a, uh, say, not just relaxation. Ayurveda has a relaxation part plus the medication part or giving medical treatments. So both are uh, combined together and then give this because it has, a, as you know, again, it has a history of 5,000, more than 5,000 years of history. I read the history. So it is used with the experience, expertise persons. So uh, always believe in Ayurveda and you can, uh, it's not difficult actually, just being with the nature. Ayurveda, as you all know, it's a lifestyle or the way of life. So uh, certain things you can do free of charge and for certain things only, you may have to depend on the doctor and get the expertise therapy therapist and uh, the medicated particular herbal oil. So all these components should be in one place and then get the proper Ayurveda. Of course, you will have a long life. Thank you, cheers to that. And uh, Shreya, uh, this question is uh, basically something uh, more of a personal one. Uh, uh, today, uh, you know, I read the uh, article uh, uh, about children, okay? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and it was like we had about 100 plus suicides of children in the last three months of COVID. And yeah, we all talk about adults, their wellness, their mental health, you know, all, everything around the industry is uh, about giving longer life to older people <laughs> or, you know, prolonging the life. But then uh, sadly, I think we totally miss out on the future of the world the young children. I mean, uh, there's so much pressure on them, like even in schools, colleges, and, and out with their parents. The parents can afford to take detox. They can like take off on a sabbatical, like Marisol said. But what, what about children? I mean, shouldn't we be concerned as an industry about the mental and uh, you know, physical wellness of children as well? And what can the industry like, you know, look forward in the future to like, you know, embrace them also as a part of our clientele. So, you know, when you look at children, children don't have inhibitions. Uh, children don't come with expectations. Uh, children are open. They come with minds that are absolutely uh, wide open to experiences and they pick on very quickly. Unfortunately, in the last 30, 40 years of digital technology coming in, everything that had to do with nature, that children would do with nature, has now been replaced with a screen in front of them. Uh, and at the same time, their resilience to failure has dropped. Uh, you know, they can't lose a game and be happy. Uh, they want everything comes easily to them. 
you know, you're right because parents can afford to take sabbaticals and take their children along. They don't really see a growth. They don't really see a connection with nature. So a lot of the things that were allowing children to experience life in a way that was meant to be has changed. Uh, so one of the things that can be done as an intervention is one, to engage them with things to do with nature, with animals, with plants, with trees, with water bodies, uh, you know, getting them engaged, enthused, excited to learn about nature. Uh, Discovery and Antio are not at all the primary uh, uh, channels that they will ever select to watch, you know. If you look at children, their curiosity comes when they're in the midst of nature. So one is, I think, to look at interventions and programs that gets kids to play with sand, with mud, with all of that. Um, two, I think it's also when you're treating a child, uh, you're actually first treating the parents. Uh, and, you know, the doctor, I'm sure Dr. Tom will agree, uh, because when you're talking to children, whether it's about their mental health, whether it's about their health itself and all of that, you have to tackle the parents first. Uh, so if you can engage the parents in a space where they are free to let their children be and experience things in terms of game plays or, you know, bake, small things like baking, touch and feel, textures, and children across ages enjoy this, right? So it can be more complex for the older children and less, I mean, less complex for the younger ones. But I think the industry can do a lot with the child population from piquing their curiosity to engaging them in conversations to building experiences around children. And usually you tend to have multiple children at the same time, right? So it's not usually one or two children you're talking about. You're talking about a collective group of children. Storytelling, simple things, simple morals, simple value building skills, simple time management skills, simple abilities to take that pressure off. And if it's possible to engage even beyond the time that they're with you, uh, you know, sending them uh, puzzles or giving them something to take with them that they can go back and do in their homes. They're simple things, but I think the idea of introducing that simple can be done in our spaces that we have. And I think children are very important in terms of focus. And if you de-stress the parents, you de-stress the children automatically. Because a lot of the times the children are carrying the stress and pressure that their parents are dealing with. So I think it's important for us to look at them for sure. And there are many ways in which you can engage them into activity, which is productive and uh, great for the future for them. Life skills are, are at the core of that, actually. Not uh, rote learning and not, not the old school mechanics of uh, school wisdom that's passed on, but real life, life skill-based training and programs. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, Dr. Tom, uh, uh, I know you would uh, like to have a go at this uh, question as well. So I'll, uh, I'll sign off this with, uh, you know, uh, having to hear what your response to this question. Look, uh, mental health is 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 huge, um, and to dive into it uh, can be very complex, especially when we're trying to generalise. But um, one thing I think we forget that being in the hospitality and tourism industry, you know, we make people feel better when people come on holiday the big purpose that they come on holiday for and what they feel when they leave the resorts that we, that we work at is that they feel better for being there. They're more relaxed. They've enjoyed different experiences. Um, and they've been taken out of their routine. And I think we have a lot of power to improve mental health. I think the next step for us is to take people at that point in time where they're, they might be receptive to learning new things and we have the chance to teach them through things like yoga, meditation. Once we get them relaxed, they're going to be so much more receptive to how do they remain relaxed and more focused. And, and I think the word we heard before was resilient. Um, and then it, 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 we're not that different from adult to child in terms of needing those life skills. And we could maybe step up a little bit and help people to learn those things while they're on their holiday because they're probably going to be more relaxed and more receptive during their stay. And, and, and I think we've got, a, we've got a really positive role that we can play there. Right. Thank you. Uh, uh, that's it for today evening. And then a, a, a big thank you for all of you for, you know, once again, uh, coming and sharing this uh, platform with us and, uh, uh, sharing your knowledge and experience uh, 
uh, which is highly uh, invaluable that you've gathered over the years in the industry. And uh, probably this is what is going to shape the industry going forward as well. So best of luck and, uh, you know, with whatever you are uh, doing and whatever you're going to do and uh, in making the world a better place and also its uh, citizens. So keep up the good work and hope to uh, meet you all sometime soon, somewhere under the auspices of SATA. Probably if we are all good, we will be doing our gala this year. Uh, if that's the case, it would be a wonderful time to like, you know, say hello again and uh, see each other in person. So until then, stay safe, stay, take care of yourself and keep others also well and healthy. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you for having us. Lovely meeting all of we you. Welcome Thank you. <laughs> we welcome everybody to South Asia.